MicroStrategy has the optionality to do buybacks at a certain point, right? Like, let's say either Bitcoin becomes very illiquid and inaccessible on exchanges in large quantities. I think there's always going to be a tradable market for Bitcoin, but it might just be very, very small quantities that you can get in a day or a week or a month. Welcome back to the channel. Aaron from Bitcoin Bros here. That was Ryan from the Quant Bros, and he was talking about MicroStrategy there. And he's going to be talking about in today's video why MicroStrategy is so powerful. What could take MicroStrategy to that next level? So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. We're going to be getting into some other MicroStrategy updates, Bitcoin updates here before we get into all of that. And the Quant Bros, if you haven't checked them out, make sure to check them out. Great micro strategy content over on twitter and i believe they have a youtube channel as well so check them out and then from mstr updates what happens when the leading mania asset the cycle isn't a zero sum altcoin meme coin nft but instead mstr which directly benefits the price and stability of bitcoin by using its premium to buy the top forever according to sailor and this is one of the reasons why we think you should be getting into mstr if you're a bitcoin holder because a lot of the times bitcoiners get into some of the smaller altcoins diversify a little bit I'm not saying take all your bitcoin and buy altcoins but i think this cycle may be different like mstr could outperform a lot of these altcoins during the cycle because of what sailor has done and then here's one of the big reasons why michael sailor says microstrategy's end game is to make microstrategy the biggest bitcoin bank in the world and it would become a trillion dollar company uh, this is huge. And one of the reasons why is because Hal Finney talked about this years ago, back in 2010. He says, actually, there is a very good reason for Bitcoin backed banks to exist. They would issue their own digital currency, redeemable for Bitcoins. Bitcoin itself cannot scale to have every single tr financial transaction in the world to be broadcast to everyone included in the blockchain. Hal Finney is probably Satoshi Nakamoto. And he's saying, Bitcoin is not going to be used for everyday transactions. We need a Bitcoin bank that's going to focus on those second layer transactions. He says Bitcoin back banks will solve the problems of Bitcoin having slow transactions. They can work like banks did before nationalized on currencies. Different banks can have different policies, some more aggressive, some more conservative. Some would be a fractional reserve, while others may be a 100% Bitcoin backed. Interest rates may vary. Cash from some banks may trade at a discount to that form others. He argues that a system would be stable, inflation resistant, and self-regulating. And he says this is the ultimate fate of Bitcoin to be the high powered money that serves as a reserve currency for banks that issue their own digital cash. Most Bitcoin transactions will occur between banks not to settle net transfers. Bitcoin transactions by private individuals will be rare as well as Bitcoin based purchases are today. Just like Ryan was saying in the beginning of the video, a lot of the Bitcoin is going to go away. You'll be able to buy Bitcoin, but in very small quantities because the price will be so high. And this is where MicroStrategy is going. They're trying to become the first Bitcoin backed bank, which could be huge, especially as Bitcoin continues to gain adoption and Bitcoin continues to grow. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it today. Let's go ahead and see what Ryan has to say about MicroStrategy and why he believes MicroStrategy will continue to perform well, not just next year, but for years to come. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. We have new Bitcoin MicroStrategy crypto videos coming out every single day. But let's go ahead and get into this clip here. Sailor, the Sailor Premium and the Sailor Phenomena and having him as the you know, lead spokesperson of Bitcoin, plus the fact that a lot of traditional asset managers would prefer an equity, and I think a lot of traditional asset managers or BC uh, venture capitalist types or, you know, just old, old school investors, um, they're going to see this guy on a video at some point if they haven't already discovered him. And they're going to be looking around at their colleagues like this guy has a stock. Why were we not in this two years ago? So I think um, I think sailors were three points by himself. I think the convertible bond market slash ability to sell shares at the money is worth three or four points right there. I think the the monopoly ownership of Bitcoin that MicroStrategy has in a lead that I don't think they'll ever be caught. Um, I think that's worth three to four points, and then I and so we're already like in the in the ten ballpark there. 
Um, and I, I could keep going with even smaller, more nuanced things, right? Like, you know, IBIT is never going to join the S&P 500. It's never going to join the NASDAQ 100. It's never going to benefit from a change in FASB fair value. It's, it's not going in the all country world index, right? And so I think all of those obvious advantages that are tilted towards micro strategy are worth a few points. Also, there's no fees to hold micro strategy. So maybe that's worth like half a point or something. But the, the key thing I think with, with MDAB as far as like trajectory and where it goes or where it's going to stay, I think it's going to be a volatile ride, right? Like I think all too often people think in terms of like equilibrium or like once we get past this FOMC meeting or this CPI report or this jobs report or this down month historically for bitcoin then will the coast will be clear and everything will settle out and volatility will you know subside but i just i just don't think that's the case i think we live in like a constant state of boom bust cycles a la george soros and i think um you know micro strategy is is as volatile as they come i think that price is gonna you know drift up into the right Right. I think that's perhaps even more important than than where MNAV goes. But um, yeah, this MNAV discussion is going to be with us for some time. It was either like the Swiss bank or the Finland bank had had acquired micro strategy stock. And um, that was definitely not something that I would have predicted or had on my bingo card, as they say. Um, and then when you when you combine that with the other the other known personnel on the cap table, so to speak. I mean, we're talking about George Soros, the guy who wrote the book on on reflexivity. We're talking about Ricardo Salinas, one of the richest people in Mexico, huge Bitcoin bull. We're talking about, you know, Adam Back, who probably doesn't need much of an introduction, a, a hardcore computer scientist, um, essentially invented uh, the proof of work consensus mechanism. You're talking about Samson Mao, one of the biggest bulls on the street. Um, and there's 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 a couple other well-known names in there, but you combine that with the fact that central banks are are buying Bitcoin. And then you can even combine that with the fact that Sailor's never sold shares from his core equity position. Never. I, I can't I've looked hard for this, can't find anything. What he did earlier this year was um, you know exercising an options award that he was granted in 2014, which he probably would have let expire worthless had, you know, they never taken the, the Bitcoin journey. And as he said, he would have retired into obscurity. So between the nation states, between the heavy hitting well-known investors, between Saylor having no clear intentions of ever selling from his core position, I think the cap table of micro strategy ownership is remarkably strong and is on a path to, to get even stronger. I think the writing's on the wall that MSTR is going to report on a FASB fair value accounting standard for Q1 of, of 2025. Um, the only two points that would have made sense would have either been, you know, at MSTR World this year when they were either first eligible or just maintain that that time optionality to get clarity on like who's going to win the election because that's going to have implications on like what could a potential tax policy look like so it really only made sense to either be you know first to market or just maintain the the optionality of time to just gather more information um before switching plus the other good thing there is that if we have a materially higher Bitcoin price, or even just higher by 50, 60, 70% than we would have had at the end of Q1 of this year, that's going to make the post FASB impact even larger because it's it's clearly a function of, of the price of Bitcoin. That I think this will be a more dramatic, just vertically ripping higher in terms of net income for micro strategy versus what Tesla had. In, uh, in 2020 and 2021, because I think we're going to go from a gap of a number that's basically around zero on net income for micro strategy to a number that could be 9 billion or 10 billion in net income in one quarter. Um, could be could be a little bit off there. And of course, it, it, it also depends on the on the price of Bitcoin.